Welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus 32, today verse 4. We're in now, starting in on the episode of the golden calf. This is a, a giant blot, a giant stain in Israel's history. Let's read verse 4. He took this from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made it into a molten calf. And they said, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So remember, Moses has gone to the mountain. He's getting the Ten Commandments. Hasn't even got him, got him down off the, off the mountain yet. The people said, you know, he's been gone too long. We don't know what to do. Uh, let's make another uh, God that will lead us. And by the way, if they were thinking of going back to Egypt, think about that. Uh, they would have to go back. They couldn't go back as like, yeah, we're Yahweh's people. We're Jehovah's people. They had to go back maybe with something the Egyptians would like, maybe like the golden calf, which the Egyptians were used to. A, the, the, the bull was a, re, or a symbol, a representation of the deity to the Egyptians. So um, this, pre, pre, this previews maybe going back to Egypt, a pretty tragic development here. Anyway, look at our text. So Aaron, who's the high priest, he's, he's a Moses' older brother, so that counts for something. Usually, you know, the senior person had more authority than the younger, but Moses had it here. But now Moses is gone, he's out of the picture. Aaron uh, tries to get them to back off with, yeah, give us your gold and I'll make a golden calf, but they gave it straight away. And now we see this tragic fourth verse. So he takes the gold, he receives it from them, that's, that's not, not good. And what does he do? He takes a tool and he makes this, and perhaps there was a wooden, uh, they made a wooden uh, base, and then they put plates of plated the gold around it after they melted it down and, and uh, slathered, slathered it on there and moved it around. So this is what you've got going on. He's making a golden calf. And then they pronounced, oh, this is, this is the God that led us up from Egypt. What, this, this dead idol? Yeah. You know, I don't know how Aaron can recover from this. This is amazing. Now, Aaron's going to go on and be forgiven and become the high priest, just the same. But wow, I mean, this was this was a giant, giant uh, destruction for, for the people and for him. So really tragic. Um, he's participating in it. And then they, they have the temerity to declare this to be the God that led them out of Egypt. God who said in the second commandment, you know, you shall have no first commandment, you'll have no other gods before me. So they've broken the first commandment. And now you shall not make, you shall not make any idols or bow down to them. Well, that's exactly what we're on the point of right here. So this is an exact repudiation of God's covenant, the Ten Commandments. Uh, they haven't even got it in their hands off the mountain yet, but here they go. They heard it spoken, and so they would know that this is exactly in contradiction to it. And Aaron, the highest leader they have because Moses is on the mountain with God. Moses, Aaron is the senior person there with them. Aaron himself fashions the thing. So this, be careful about trusting your leaders, your spiritual leaders. Sometimes you get an Eli or an Aaron. In fact, maybe more than sometimes. Maybe that's almost the norm. But friends, uh, here they're going to be utterly led astray because they want to do something wrong and the leader's going to go ahead and go along with it. All right, tomorrow morning, let's go onward further and see what happens next. Thank you.